Good morning, everybody, and welcome to how to get Postman to work with QuickBooks. Getting Postman to work with QuickBooks takes a lot of setup. There are a lot of steps that we have to go through to get there. Um, so we're going to start up, start out with gathering all the information that we're going to need when we get over to Postman to do the setup. But there's a lot that we have to collect from uh, into it before we get going. So first of all, if you haven't created an app, you need to do that. Uh, you go to developerintuit.com, create an account if necessary, and you create an app. So there's only one option here for creating the app for online. And then you call your app whatever you want, my new um, Postman app. And you'll probably want accounting. So then we create the app. And there we go, it ends up in the dashboard. Before we get to the dashboard, we need to do some other things. We need to set up a company, a test company to use. You can use your own company if you like, um, or you can set up a, a sandbox company. You do that by just clicking here. It's very easy. You probably want advanced, add. There we go, advanced sandbox company. So now that we have our application and our sandbox set up, now we need to gather some other information. So let's go to the playground, developer.intuit.com app developer playground. This is where you're going to gather the OAuth information that you need to set up for, um, for Postman. So in here, you select your application. And we need to refresh to get the application that I just created. my new Postman Sandbox. So there we go. And now what that'll do is give you the OAuth keys and the OAuth secret. So these are very important. Keep these things secret. I know you can see mine. I'm going to delete this app when, when the video is done. But uh, you need to keep these secret because that will, uh, if anybody grabs these, they can use them to do all sorts of things to your, to your QuickBooks install. So now that we have our authorization keys, we come down here, we pick scope. Probably you'll be using uh, the COM Intuit QuickBooks Accounting. And then we get an authorization code. We choose our company, which is the one that we just chose, that we just created. We click next and we're gonna connect. Yes, we wanna do that and we have a connection. So up here in step two, it gives us the authorization code and a Realm ID. This is the ID of the company that we just created. Um, the authorization code is only good for five minutes. All this is used for is to get the access token, which we're gonna do next. So if you're not fast enough, this can expire. All you have to do if, if you get to the point where you're, you're trying to make your API call and the authorization codes expire, just come back here and create another one. Um, so we're going to go to create another one with the get authorization code. The next thing we're going to need are the URIs you, that we need to use to get access from into it. These you can find at two different websites. Just go here and it'll give you all these, uh, these endpoints here. Notice that there are two of them. This is for the sandbox, so that's your test company. And this is for development, open ID configuration. So that's that's your produ production company. We're gonna we're gonna be using the sandbox company today. These are these same URLs are good for every application out there. So when you when you hit one of these uh, URLs, you send your credentials and so in, into it can tell what app you are and what um, what company you're trying to connect to. So these you can store off uh, in some place uh, fairly permanent. Once you've got those, then we need to get the current version of the API that you're using. So if you come to um, the uh, into it, the API Explorer, and you'll see up here at the top, you choose the, the company. I'm going to refresh here again. So up here, what we're going to do is choose the company that we want, so that one. And then this is the minor version of the API that we're using. This 
this page, it seems slow, but that's because the queries, that it's, it has example queries. If you scroll down, it has example queries for what you want to do. And these are live, so it's actually querying your real database or your real uh, uh, sandbox. So it feels like these are slow, but that's because it's, it's live data that's coming back. So if you scroll through here, you can see a lot of examples for how to do, um, how to hit their API for different types of data. What we're looking for in this page is the minor version, so 70. When I, cre when I uh, created the, this video, we were all on minor version 70, 69. So I'm gonna stick with that just so we don't have to, to change anything in the future, but you can go with whatever the current minor version is that you need. The next thing we need to do is set up some callbacks. So the way OAuth works is you submit your, your query for data, customer data, or whatever it is you're looking for. And with that, you submit the access token that we were just looking at. Um, but in order to validate that, uh, the Intuit calls a, an API that you define to go to send you the data back. So what you have to do is define that API. So if we go back here to this screen, right after we created our new, um, our new app here, we've got uh, develop your app. If we come down to keys and credentials, this client key and client secret, those are the same things that we looked at before. And down here are those redirect UIs, URIs that I was talking about. This one is in here by default because it points to the API Explorer. This gives the API Explorer, um, lets it access your data. So what we wanna do is add another one and it is specifically for Postman. So this is the URL that, you're, that everybody's gonna use. This is not just, it's not specific to, um, uh, to any particular installation. So you need to put that in, save it, and now the Intuit can send information back to the Postman OAuth 2. So the last piece of information that we need to collect before going over to Postman is the Postman queries. So on Intuit's site, they have a lot of um, predefined Postman queries that are very, very handy. You don't need these, they're not required, but it's really handy to have them. It makes everything much, much easier later. So um, go ahead here and run in Postman. I assume you have Postman installed. If not, you need to go install it first. Um, and in, uh, run whichever one we, you wanna do. So we would do run in Postman here, and that'll create the collections in Postman. So now that we've got all our information from Intuit, we are almost ready to issue some queries we're using Postman. So the first thing we do, we have to set up some variables so that the Postman queries know where to get their information. Come over here to Environments, create a new one, and uh, make sure that it's got this little check mark so that we're using the, so that we'll be using those in um, our queries. Create these variables, you can just type them in. Um, but all of these are ones that are used in the predefined queries that, that Intuit gives us. All of this data can be found in the, the information from Intuit that we just collected. Like a client ID is down here, client ID. The client secret is here. The um, scope is here. CRF token, that's a unique string that you use to validate the incoming information from Intuit to make sure that it really is coming from Intuit. This can be any unique string that you know. Uh, I like to use GUIDs, or we can put any unique string in here. Company ID is the Realm ID. The minor version is the version that we looked up when we were in the, the API Explorer. So if we come up here, I'm using uh, version 69. Um, the user agent is the name of your application. That's fine, you can leave this the way it is since we're just using Postman. The base URL has to be this. 
what the queries do is add the HTTPS in front. So you want to leave it without the HTTPS. And we're going to be going against the sandbox, sand, sandbox company data. And then these URLs come from these URLs that we queried earlier. So once you get all those, um, enter those in, make sure to save. Then one thing you'll notice is that we don't have the authorization code in here. Since the, since the authorization code is only valid for five minutes, it's really more of a pain to, to put it in a variable because you keep having to switch back and forth. So I just added enter it right into the, into the queries. So let's go take a look at how the queries work. So now we're ready to issue some queries. What you do is you come to collections and this gives you these collections here, the, the predefined queries that come from into it. If you, if you had gone to set up in, um, in into it here, these running this will create this collection here for you. So make sure you do that because it makes things much, much easier. So if we collect on or click on accounts, it's just convenient. You can use any one of these, uh, any one of these objects that come from into it. I like to use accounts. Now, the first thing we have to do before we can query data is set up the OAuth. So here we have to set the type as OAuth2 and add authorization data to query header or request headers. We want our token to be blank because we're going to be creating a new one. Um, the header prefix is, prefix is bearer. This is the, um, the uh, authorization code. So if we come here, this is the authorization code that we got earlier that I said was only was very short lived. So you can get another one if it's been a little while since you've been over here, you can get another authorization code. Let's let that refresh. We're going to go to that company. And now we've got a new authorization code. So we're going to copy that out there. And we're going to put that in here. Authors, grant type of authorization code. These are all our variables. Note that um, that uh, Postman uses two curly braces for variables. And if you come down in here to advanced, make sure that this is the auth call, callback URL, the refresh token URL, and also the um, auth callback URL goes up in here. Once those, once all this is set up, then you come down here and you get a new access token. This should query into it. Into it makes you select a company. We're gonna go there. And author authentication complete. So we can either wait or hit proceed. Here is our access token. We're gonna use this token and that sets the token up here for, uh, for our queries. So now we have our authorization token um, and all, all that's left is to actually query data. So we come over here to the body. We already have a query that comes from into it. This is just a standard query. It's asking for the first one, the first five accounts from number one to number five. We're gonna hit send. And we wait a second. And we got to scroll this up. And there is our data. All five accounts. And that's it. Now you, you're using um, uh, the Intuit API from Postman.